Element 3, Musculoskeletal Hazards and Risk Control 1. A worker is manually loading boxes of components onto metal shell. A. Identify four types of injury that worker could suffer while carrying out this activity or list four specific types of injury that may cause by the incorrect manual handling of loads. Page no colon 37, 4. Tendon and ligament injuries. Muscle injuries. Hernias. Work-related upper limb disorders, rules. Cuts, burns, dislocation and broken bones. B. Identify factors in relation to the task that will increase the risk of injury. Page no colon 37, 4. At what height is the load being picked up, carried or put down? Is the task very repetitive? Is there a high work rate? Is a long carrying distance involved? Does the task involve stooping, worker has to keep their legs straight and bend their back, to move the load? Does the task involve twisting, turning the shoulders while the feet stay still? Can rest breaks be taken as the worker requires them? Does the task involve lifting the load through a vertical distance? Does the task involve reaching above shoulder height? Does the task involve the worker holding the load away from their trunk, torso? 2. A. Outline a good handling technique that could be adopted by a person required to lift a load from the ground. 6. Page no colon 310. Employees should be trained in basic safe lifting technique. This technique minimizes the risk of musculoskeletal disorders. Before lifting. Check the weight and stability of the load. Plan the route of the carry. Establish a firm grip. The lift. Bend the knees and use the leg muscles to lift. Keep the back upright. Keep the load close to the body. Avoid twisting, overreaching, jerking. Setting down. Use the same principles as when lifting. Maintain good balance. Set the load down and then adjust its position using body weight. A. Give two examples of how a manual handling task might be avoided. 2. Forklift trucks. Hoists. Conveyors. Cranes. 3. Outline the precautions that should be taken when using mobile cranes. Ensuring that the load to be lifted is within the safe lifting capacity of the crane. Safe lifting capacity will vary with the length of the jib and the distance away from the crane that the jib is positioned to. Radius, so capacity can vary from one lift to the next. Carefully sighting the crane on even, stable ground in a safe position away from structures or overheads that might be struck during the lifting operation. Using the outriggers correctly. Checking that the crane has been maintained and has a certificate of thorough examination in accordance with local laws. Restricting use of the crane to trained and competent operators only. Ensuring that each lift is planned and supervised by a competent person and that the driver and slinger are competent. Providing a bank's man to give directions to the crane operator with good means of communication between driver and other operators. Ensuring that safety devices such as overload indicators are operational and are used correctly. These devices are frequently disabled or ignored by the crane operator. Checking that there are no obstructions such as buildings or overhead lines in the vicinity of the lift. Checking weather conditions and obeying any manufacturer's recommendations about maximum wind speed. 4. Identify the precautions to be taken when using a mobile elevating platform, MEWP, to reach a high point as a streetlight. 8, page number 130. Vehicle sighted on firm, stable ground. Sufficient clearance from obstructions and overheads when operating. Barriers around MUPS to prevent it being struck by vehicles or mobile plant. Barriers also act to keep people out from underneath the cradle. Guard rails incorporated into the cradle. Safety harnesses worn as an additional backup. Controls of the mupe should be inside the cradle so that the person actually working at height has some control. 
not driven with the cradle raised unless specifically designed to do so. Must not be overloaded. Must be inspected as an item of lifting equipment designed to carry people. Use restricted to trained, authorized staff only. Five battery powered forklift trucks are used to move materials in a warehouse lift trucks. A. Identify four hazards associated specifically with battery powered forklift trucks. Page number 315. 4. Charging batteries emit hydrogen gas which is explosive. Batteries contain dilute sulfuric acid which is corrosive. Batteries are extremely heavy and present a manual handling risk if they have to be changed for charging purposes. The electricity can cause arcing, shock, burns or fire. Battery contents are an environmental hazard requiring appropriate disposal. Battery powered vehicles can be very quiet or almost silent, increasing the risk of collision with pedestrians. Battery leads can shorten result in burns and electric shock. B. Outline the means by which the risk of accidents from reversing vehicles within a workplace can be reduced. Page number 248. Avoidance of reversing by implementing one way traffic systems. Segregation of pedestrians and vehicles or the provision of refuges. Good vehicle selection so that drivers have adequate visibility. Provision of audible reversing alarms and flashing beacons. Provision of mirrors at blind spots to see approaching pedestrians. Use of high visibility clothing. Ensuring that the area is well lit. Provision of banks men. Training for drivers and pedestrians working in the area. 3. Outline the specific causational factors that may have contributed to work related upper limb disorders. Page no colon 38. Manual handling risk assessment focuses on four main factors the task, the load, the environment, individual capabilities, the task. At what height is the load being picked up, carried, or put down? Is the task very repetitive? Is there a high work rate? Is a long carrying distance involved? Does the task involve stooping? Worker has to keep their legs straight and bend their back to move the load. Does the task involve twisting, turning the shoulders while the feet stay still? Can rest breaks be taken as the worker requires them? Does the task involve lifting the load through a vertical distance? Does the task involve reaching above shoulder height? Does the task involve the worker holding the load away from their trunk, torso? The load. The load can be assessed by asking questions such as How heavy is the load? How large and bulky is the load? Is the load an easy shape to lift? How stable is the load? Where is the center of gravity, C of G, of the load? Is the load difficult to grip? Or does it have handles? Is the load hot, sharp, or otherwise hazardous? the environment. The environment can be assessed by asking questions such as, are there restrictions on the space available? Is the floor surface slippery or uneven? Are there changes in floor level, steps, stairs, etc.? What are the light levels like? What is the temperature and humidity? The individuals. Individual capabilities can be assessed by asking questions such as Does the activity require unusual ability? Some handling activities require unusual strength, stamina, size or technique. Does the activity present significant risk to vulnerable individuals such as pregnant women or people with pre-existing back injuries? 4. Outline the measures that can be taken to reduce the risk of work-related upper limb disorders. Control repetitive handling by introducing frequent rest breaks or job rotation to minimize the length of time that an individual worker has to perform the task. Eliminate stooping and twisting by changing the layout of the workstation. Use a table or lift to bring the load to waist height to eliminate picking up from floor level. Break down or heavy load into smaller parts. 
use several workers to handle a large, bulky load rather than just one. Stabilize an unstable load by securing it or putting it into a container. Mark up a load with an off-center C of G so that workers can see where the C of G is. Attach handles to a load that is difficult to grasp. 3. Outline the main factors to be considered when doing an ergonomic assessment of a DSE workstation. Page number 32. Task Factors. Repetition. The need for repetitive movements when carrying out the task, for example typing for several hours. Force. The physical force required to perform the task and the strain this puts on the body, for example closing stiff catches on a machine. Posture. Any requirement to adopt an awkward posture, for example stooping over into a bin to pick out contents. Twisting, any twisting action required by the task, for example twisting the wrist when using a screwdriver. Rest, the potential for the worker to rest and recover from any fatigue, for example a worker on a production line cannot stop the line, they have to keep working even when fatigued. Environment factors. Lighting, the availability of natural and artificial light and the effect on the worker's ability to see the work clearly. The presence of glare may also cause a problem. Other environmental parameters, in particular temperature, humidity and ventilation will directly affect the worker's ability to perform the task and their comfort. Equipment factors. Equipment design, the shape of the equipment and how this affects ease of use. For example a large, shaped handle on a scraper makes it easier to hold and use. Equipment adjustability. The scope there is for the user to adjust the equipment to suit their personal requirements, for example the height of the seat for a computer user. 4. Identify the features of a chair to ensure it is suitable for use at a DSE workstation. The chair is suitable. The chair is stable. The chair is adjusted correctly. The user is aware of how to adjust the chair. There is proper backrest. Seat height adjustment. Swivel mechanism. Seat back height and tilt adjustment. 5. Outline the possible risks to health associated with the use of display screen equipment, DSE. Page number 33. Rules, associated with repetitive use of the keyboard and mouse for long periods of time. Eye strain, temporary eye fatigue associated with prolonged use of the screen. Back pain, and other MSDs associated with sitting in a fixed position, perhaps with poor posture, for long periods of time. Fatigue and stress, associated with the type of work being done. For example call center staff may be subjected to verbal abuse during telephone calls.